All right, guys, so we are doing the very last JavaScript algorithm and data structure project in the advanced section, cash register. So this one was uh, quite long, quite hard, quite a few bits of this to accomplish, but we have a couple things. Uh, so let's talk about what the function is doing. Uh, well, the check cash register is going to take in the price of an item as well as how much cash it's being paid with and then the change in the drawer. So the change in the drawer is a two-dimensional array, similar to something like this. And it's going to have pennies, uh, nickels, dimes, quarters, $1 bills, $5 bills, $10 bills, $20 bills, and $100 bills, potentially. And you can see here we have a, a dollar and one pennies, so 101 pennies in total. And what we need to do <laughs> is a couple things. One, uh, we need to report a status of the cash register on the way out, depending on uh, if the funds are sufficient. So if, the, if there's insufficient funds, meaning that there is less cash in the drawer or they can't make exact change, just return an empty array and put in the f insufficient funds. Now, if the if it is going to be closed that means that the change is exactly equal to the amount in the two-dimensional cash and drawer array and just go ahead and set change equal to that value now if it's open it means that or we're going to set a status of open rather um, it means that the change that's due we are going to return that based off of what's left over so the change that's still in the drawer um, excuse me, the change that we're giving the customer is what we're going to be returning here. So maybe if it is in the first example um, right here, it's 1950 and they give us a 20, we're going to give them two quarters back. And we're going to return that in the highest to the lowest. So quite a few uh, moving parts in here. Um, let's go ahead and jump into it. And because I have, uh, because this is about 100 lines of code, um, and I did my best to clean it up as much as possible, but because this is a hundred lines of code, I'm actually going to do it in the text editor that I use so that I can have the console logs going at the same time to hopefully make it make a little bit more sense. Hey guys, if you like this tutorial, don't forget to check out my 100 algorithms challenge to help you ace your next JavaScript coding interview. We do 100 algorithms. Some of them are used at companies like Google, Facebook, Uber, Amazon. We dive into 100 different solutions. I recently also added a section on technical phone screen questions for JavaScript as well. I show you how to to build this sort of mini portfolio of algorithms and get you ready for those technical interviews. You can get it in the description for just $9.99. All right, and uh, if you're curious on what extension I'm using, it's called Quokka, Q-U-O-K-K-A. Um, and this is gonna allow me to console log in the actual JavaScript code once I launch it like I just did. And so you'll see if I console.log true or something like that, you should see It's not doing anything. Oh, because we're not calling the function. Silly me. So let's go ahead and uh, check cash register. And we'll go actually into free code camp real quick. And we'll just get this first uh, one right here. I was like, why isn't it working? It should be working. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. And then you'll see that it console logs true out. So now that we've done that, let me go ahead and hide this. And we have our initial function call. So um, let's go ahead and start uh, by creating a couple variables. One thing that we're going to need is we already know that we need that status object and the change object. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and create a object called a cache register. And I'm going to have a status and we'll just initialize it to an empty string. And then we'll also have the change object and we'll just initialize this to change in drawer. It doesn't really matter at this point. Now, the next thing that we're going to want is to find out how much change do we actually need based off of uh, the, the price and the cash that's coming in. So we can make a const here. And the one of the... Um, 
harder parts of this is that if you've never worked with like math and JavaScript, you're going to run into some strange floating point errors. You're going to run into some strange number errors. So like there's um, some classic examples of this in, in JavaScript. So a good example of this is you'll see that if I were to add 0.2 plus 0.1, we're going to get 0.3004. So JavaScript's notoriously, this is like one of the things that people who work in like Java or C Sharp talk shit on JavaScript all the time about. But JavaScript is notoriously bad with numbers. <coughs> so there's going to be some logic in here that we're going to try and deal with that. So I say that because what we're going to do here is we're going to parse a float out of the cash minus price and then we're going to call two fixed on all, pretty much everything <coughs> excuse me and so we're going to fix it to two decimal points right so at this point what we should be getting from change needed is we're going to get 50 cents excellent all right uh, the next thing that we want to do is to figure out how much change is actually available in in our cash register and so I'm going to start by setting it up and we're going to say change available. I'm going to set this equal to get total. This is going to be a new function that we're going to write. Get total cash register change. And in here, this is going to take in the um, change in drawer, the CID. So let's go ahead and write that function real quick. So function get total cash register ch change and We'll just call this CID uh, as well. Um, I actually don't like CID. I use change in drawer. So um, CID is actually uh, really bad because it's not a descriptive variable name at the end of the day. I'm using it here because that is what was provided. While change in drawer lets you know exactly what it is. So uh, we're just gonna get the total real quick. So I'm gonna initialize this to zero and you could probably have done this in reduce, but uh, I did not at the time. So we're gonna run a for each. Uh, you know what, let's instead of for each, uh, do a for of let, um, uh, for let change of um, change in drawer. And then we'll say, I'll just create a const here, const change, just to be, um, uh, we don't need that. So we'll just say total plus equals change one. And then what we want to do here is we just want to return total. Now one way that we could do, um, make this a little bit more descriptive if we want, is instead of doing it like this, um, we'll say let coin value equal or maybe change value equal to that one and remember because it's a two-dimensional array this is essentially our first array and then we're serving up these arrays and then we're saying target the first index of this the first index of this or the index one rather and we're going to return that and you'll see now when we console log change available cool and you'll notice we get a bunch of craziness, 335.40.9997 and, and all that sort of craziness. So how are we going to solve that? Well, we're going to call two fixed to the two decimal place on it. And we get 335.41 and try to avoid some of that JavaScript craziness to the best of our ability. You know. All right. The next thing we need to do is we need to set a status. We need to find our statuses. Now we know that if there's not enough money, we're gonna set inefficient funds. <coughs> we know that if there is a, um, if there is a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? If there is a, um, I'm sorry, I just saw oh, something to refactor in my code and we can do that at the end of the video. But um, let's go ahead and update the cash register status. And we're going to set the status here equal to uh, get cash register status. And in here, we're going to take in two things. We're going to take in change needed as well as change available. Cool. Now we have to go define that function. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So let's go ahead and close this. And we'll go ahead and define that. So function get total cash register uh, status. And in here, we're going to have a parameter called change needed. And then we're also going to have change available. Now, at this point in time, we've already defined change needed and we've already defined change available. So what we're going to do here is we are going to now go ahead and have three essentially if statements that are going to find out if we need if the status is going to be closed, if the status is going to be open, or the status is going to have inefficient funds. Now to do this, uh, because uh, uh, to do this, we're going to create essentially an enum, but really an object here called const, and uh, this is going to be a um, uh, a constant and we're going to create this outside of outside of our function scope um, we could use closure so it's within but this is fine so we're going to do closed and that's going to be closed and the, these string values again are coming from the application from free code account and then we're going to do um, insufficient funds oops we're gonna do the same thing here. Insufficient. Let me copy this over because I actually spelt this wrong like three times and it took me an hour to figure out. <laughs> it's like, why isn't my code working? And then we're gonna have open. And it's not that long, so I think I'm gonna bring it up on one line. Let's go ahead and fix that semicolon I threw in there. All right, cool. Now that we have that, what we can do here is we can start by defining uh, some of the, the base classes that happen here. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the change needed is greater than the change available. If it is, we're going to return insufficient funds. We're also going to check if the change needed is less than the change available. And uh, if it is, we're gonna put open and then um, we're gonna return close for everything else. And then we're gonna handle some use cases outside of this function. And this is where I think I might refactor something here or do it outside the video later on um, where we can make this function be all encompassing. But that's the basic use cases that we're gonna have here. So we're gonna have if, so if, uh, and we're gonna wrap this in a number um, because I ran it because these are strings being passed in and we say uh, so we're going to convert it to a number and we're going to say thing, same thing on change available so if that is the case what we want to do here is return we're going to use that essentially dictionary that we created earlier that the it's insufficient funds if the amount of change we need is more than in the register and then we're going to say if uh, essentially the same thing so let's go ahead and just copy this line over except it's going to be in the opposite direction now if that is greater than that we're just going to return register status dot open and if it's neither of those we're going to just go ahead and return register status dot closed and now we're going to go ahead and have our register status. And if we go ahead and say cash register dot status, we'll get closed right now. All right, so everything's connected so far, but we're going to have um, some issues here where um, where we're going to now check if a cash register status has a uh, if if that status is inefficient funds at this point we we're done because it doesn't have enough coin change to to really do anything and so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do a check real quick and that's why we all one of the reasons we created this is that you don't really want to hard code strings into your application you want to sort of have one location and you don't usually want to have global functions for this this is why I said you might do it with closure and you may in your application import this from another file as well um, but that, that's for another conversation about clean code practices um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say look if our cash register 
dot status is exactly equal to the register status dot insufficient funds. What we're all we're gonna do now, take cash register, we're gonna update the change to be an empty array, because that's what it calls for, and then we're just gonna return the cash register uh, object, and we're done for when there's not enough money in the in the array. So that's that's the first use case. So excellent. Um, okay, so now that we've done that, we need to now get the customers change. Uh, we need to handle those use cases. So we're going to update our change object, and we're so we're going to say cash register dot change. And you can see why I wrote at this point, why I wrote out several functions. This will, I wrote out three functions and you could probably write a fourth in all honesty to, for this because you know, our code needs to read cleanly and it needs to, uh, you know, having one huge function, usually you don't want your functions to be more than 10, 15 lines of code at most. And, that, and depending on who you ask, that'd probably be a lot. And so this isn't even the best example, but you can see kind of the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So uh, we're gonna call this get customers change. And it's gonna take in two things, the change needed, and also the change in the drawer. So let's go ahead and define, redefine that. So right here, we're gonna create a function, get customers change, change needed, and we'll say change in drawer. Cool. Now this is where a lot of the logic gets crazy. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a const called change. And this is going to be what we're going to store our, our values that we're going to return in. So that's going to be an array. The next thing that we need to do is you'll notice how the values that's being passed in here is a penny. It doesn't actually, nowhere in here does it tell you that a penny is one cent. I know a penny is one cent. You know a penny is one cent. But the computer doesn't know a penny is one cent. So we're going to create a, a dictionary to essentially tell the computer that it's that. And so I'm just going to copy this in uh, instead of having to type it all out. So you'll see here that we have essentially each one of the keys that are in the object, a penny, a nickel, a dime, a quarter, $1, $5, $10, $20, $100, um, based off of the keys that were in there. That's gonna be our currency dictionary to look it up. It also said that it wanted it to return it in the largest value to the smallest value. So it wants our values to go back 100, 200, 300. So instead of return, uh, reversing the values or reversing the array, there's no need for that. So our for loop that we're going to do to iterate through and find out how much change to return, we're just going to set it equal to, we're going to do it in reverse. So um, if you've ever had to do a palindrome or anything like that or ever reverse an array, you're going to initialize it to one. We're going to say, well, i is less than or equal to zero, i plus plus, or excuse me, i minus minus. And now we're going to start at the end of the end of the array and work our way back. Now, um, this is probably where a lot of people got stuck. Myself included. Uh, it took a this is where I spent the bulk of my time at. So, a uh, couple things. We are going to create a const here, and we're going to get the coin name. So, like, once you start breaking things out so it makes sense into p little pieces like this, um, this is usually how I do it. So, we're going to first get the name in a variable here. Let's make our code a little bit more readable. So, we have the name. That's the penny, the nickel, the dime. The next thing that we're going to get is the coin total. So that's also a const. Set that equal to um, the change in drawer on the current index value and in the first spot. All right, so we have the coin name, we have the coin total. Now we gotta get the coin value, right? That's what we created that dictionary for. So that's going to be the currency dictionary with the coin name in it. The coin name is penny, it's gonna return that it's a one. All right, now that we have that, we need to get the coin amount. So that's going to be the coin total divided by the coin value. All right, so 
go ahead and create a const here. I'm gonna say coin, excuse me, uh, this is actually a let. Let, and we're gonna say coin amount is equal to coin total divided by the coin value. And we're gonna call it two fixed on this as well to two decimal places. All right. The last variable we have to create is a coins to return. Um, so we're initialize that to zero. Now this, this coins to return will tell us how many quarters we're actually going to be sending back, or pennies, right? So um, each one of these is crucial to for a wall loop that we need, as well as, um, as, well as uh, to find out what we need to do quite a bit of logic here. And then at the end of that, of course, we want to return our change object, which we will uh, work with in just a second. So now that we have those values, for each iteration of the for loop, we need a while loop. Now this is going to say while the change needed, meaning the amount that we have left, is greater than or equal to the coin value that we're currently on, meaning that if we have a dollar in change needed, but it's you know a $5, $5 bill, we're, we're, we're just going to skip over, right? That's not going to hit the while loop because it's too great. But if we have a quarter, and while we still have a quarter, go ahead and do that. Um, or excuse me, I forgot that, the uh, additional part. And the coin amount, meaning the amount that's left in our change drawer for that specific coin, is greater than zero. Continue this iteration. So while we still need change, and while that coin amount is greater than zero, we're going to do some stuff. So what are we going to do? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, look, um, minus from the change that we need, the coin value, the 25 cents, the dollar, whatever it is, and then change needed is going to be equal to changed uh, needed dot two fixed. I wonder why I didn't do this on two lines. Did I just? I don't know. I, I might refactor this at the end, but that might be able to go in two lines. I might have to like parse an int, then two, st two string or two fixed. I, this was like, I don't know what I, why I didn't do that. Uh, coin amount minus minus. So we're going to take the coin amount that's left and we're going to minus from it or minus one from it, right? So the coin amount, we're going to minus one from it. And where coin amount is the amount of coins left in there in the drawer. So like if we have $5 and their dollars would be five and we're minusing one, one, five, 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 five bills, five coins. If we have $1.25, it would be five as well. So we're minusing one from that. And then we're going to say coins to return plus plus. All right. So now that we have that, we're saying, okay, every iteration in this while loop, go ahead and add one to the quarter. Go ahead and add one to the dollar. All right. Now, after that happens, and when that we pass that while loop, we're going to say if coins to return, because we only want to return the amounts that we're that we actually iterate on. So if you know if it's a hundred dollar bill, we don't want to return. And you need a dollar and change. We don't want to return that we gave you back zero hundred dollar bills. That's the point of this line right here. So if that's the case, go ahead and push. Uh, uh, remember, it's two nest, double nested array, and so we have the coin name in there as our string, and then the coins to return times the coin value to give us the total that we have here. So remember coins to return would be the amount of coins that we're giving back in change or this should actually, it's not really coins. I know we said coin here. Um, better name might be currency for this because we do have bills in here. Um, but for, for the sake of this tutorial, because it's already going to be a long one, I'm not going to uh, continue <laughs> continue changes so we're going to multiply that and then return it all right so now that we have that let's go ahead and console log the change here and that returns and oh i see where the error is change while well, i is greater than or equal to zero not less than uh which is a mistake and then uh let's this needs to be changed needed also a little spelling mistake here and 
There we go. So you'll see that we're getting back our correct change now, which we weren't before. Um, and uh, just a little, little air. All right, so now that we have that, we just have to handle a couple of use cases. Um, and this is where I was kind of suggesting I should do some refactoring here. And um, uh, because this video is a little bit too long as well, I'm gonna ignore it. But so remember we handled some, some basic use cases where now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if change needed is in, in our git status, is what I mean, git total cache register change. So, and what we're gonna pass in there is our cache register dot change, the value we just put back, but instead of passing in the change in drawer, it's just change and that might even, we might even change our parameter to be to be what's in, in the rest of your So if the change that we need is greater than the amount that's in the in there, um, or we were not able to, to get it, we're gonna go ahead and just update our uh, cash register status to say insufficient funds. And this is going to be the, the register status dot, uh, Ins the insufficient funds and then we're also going to go ahead and set that to be equal to uh, an empty array and then last but not least we have one more if statement here where we're going to say cash register dot status is equal to equal equal to the register status dot Closed. Excellent. And uh, meaning that it everything matched exactly, that we took exact amount of change. All we're going to go ahead is in cash register dot change, and go ahead and set that equal to the um, CI the CID value. And we're going to go ahead and return the cash register at the end of the day. And that is it. I know it's quite a bit and we should, if we console log everything out here. Oh. And we have to fix a small bug where I put the greater than, that should be less than. And now we should be good. Um, we should get the correct output, status open, and the change is two quarters. So you can see there's quite a bit going on here. Um, this is a, a longer one than most. Uh, it is the last one for the section, so kind of to be expected. Um, some things I would do to continue to clean this up is I would extract all of this into its own function, and that might have me um, move that this part as well into there and just set the values there, return it, um, maybe in this function call and clean this up because this, this really doesn't even feel like it should be part of this. But, you know, uh, it was my first go around at it. So uh, have, have fun and share your uh, solutions in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I, I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.